everybody. Hope all is well. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> it's not funny. No, it's not. I've said before, Dusties, they are losers. And boy, they are what? They are users. Keep stopping up Mammy Biscuits. Keep up alive. Oh, they make it so hard. Not black men. And we got it. And black women ain't got no, it's not a dream for us either. Okay? Let's not pretend. So this here, this is what, Mammy Biscuits. This is, I said before, I, we've had a video on it before, about women getting evicted, one sitting up here with a, what, two or three month old baby. I mean, in that car seat thing, that carriage thing. In the car seat. Oh, I got to hire some movers. Oh, you see a bunch of other women putting this stuff up into a sofa and go stay with mama, grandmama, or with some other women. What baby daddy had? This child has had here. See the poverty D. They're going to keep on dealing with them. Hey, do you, boo? So check this out. Uh, look what happened to this uh, tenderoni. They showing you every day. I hope there's a lesson to be learned. Check it. May 11th, I found out I was being evicted from my home. And I told him, you know, I told him what the situation was. He acted like he was supporting me and asked me all the right questions. Like, you know, how much do you think we're going to need for a security deposit to get a new place? Because at the time we were planning on continuing to live together because he was staying with me where I lived at for about a year. Mm. Um, he would go home on the weekends, but outside of that, Monday through Friday, he was with me. Sunday, he would come back because that's when he dropped his kids off. Whatever. So that same day, May 11, um, he had a female at his job. This is, I told him 11 o'clock in the morning and somewhere between that time and 2.30 p.m., he was seeing her. How do I know this? Because I went through his phone. And when I went through his phone, I, I seen the messages of the female saying, you know, they're, they're talking back and forth with each other saying how. Okay. So, um, yeah. So just to clarify, um, he wasn't in any shape, way or form of, um, he just started, um, treating me recklessly once, um, the vacate notice came and to clarify it wasn't an actual eviction like it wasn't anything to the point where i was being asked to leave because rent wasn't being paid i was being asked to leave because the owner was selling the property so just to clarify that it wasn't a situation where i had some man just laying up on me and using me it was a situation where once upon a time we were good and then we weren't and then um when i fell on hard times that's when things started to to really decline because it was kind of like a situation where once I fell on hard times, I was being treated like I was a bum. He was giving me bum treatment. But again, to clarify, it was a notice to vacate. It wasn't non-paying rent situation. It wasn't none of that. All right. So. Okay. He's not a bum. Why was he staying with you, honey? Why can't you go stay with him? I feel for this lady because you still try. You still try. To, he, he's not a bum. He's not a bum. No, honey, why did he move in with you? Why could you go and move in with him? He's not a bum. You see what I mean? I think some ladies don't know what a man is. He's not a bum, but he's moving in with you. And he stayed there for a year. But then when things got bad, so as long as you understand it, as long as she was working and I guess can hold the way to pay them, because again, she said that he was staying with her. Once upon a time we were good and then we weren't. And then um, when I fell on hard times, that's when things started to, to really decline because it was kind of like a situation where once I fell on hard times, I was being treated like I was a bum. He was yes. So hold on. So as long as you had your, uh, as long as you had a place to live secure, and I'm assuming you're paying a bill because again, he said he's staying. You said he's staying with me. So then, when you fell on hard times, I mean, you got to find some other place to live, and everybody knows that rent is increasing. Now he's treating you like a bum, not like a princess to say, hey, don't worry about it. I'll go ahead. You know, I've been staying with you. It's my turn. I'm going to go ahead and find us a place. That's how most men do. 
I'm going to go ahead and find us a place, you know, and uh, we'll just move there. He didn't say that. Dusties are losers in their uses. I keep telling you, they really, some of them are really like women. They just need you. A little fun, little pastime, and they need three hots and a cot. It's either you or jail. Yeah. So you fell on hard times, and he's treating you like a bomb. But you still want to say he's not a bomb. You got to be kidding me. If he doesn't have his own over here on this channel, we say, girl, don't let him into your home. He can go to the homeless shelter. The man is a bomb. Having a place to live, your financial security, housing, food security, those are major, major issues that work with a person psychologically. So once you, so as long as you were able to hold down that place to live, he was okay. Oh, we can't stay here anymore. You got to go. And those things are quick. What the eviction of AK, you can find something quick. He already knows. Uh-oh. In his mind, I bet he's probably thinking, she finna, she, man, she, she might expect me to pull up and do something. She, oh, man. I like this right here when well, I'm staying with you. Now you want, this might give her an idea of going 50-50. You did not hear us say one thing. We paid half the rent. You did not hear us say that. She didn't say we we're paying 50-50 and we fell on hard times. I fell on hard times. That kind of makes me leads me to believe that you were holding the whole thing down and then he's treating you like a bomb. What does that tell you? He's there out of necessity, baby. He's not there because he loves you, that he cares. He's out of necessity. And you still got your blinders on, in my opinion. If he doesn't have his... It, man, if a man can't put me anywhere, I sure don't need him. If I'm sitting up here, oh my goodness, I'm getting evicted. If if I don't hear the words like, well, let me go ahead and... Hey, I got this place over here. Hey, come stay with me or I'll get us a place. That, that, that's my cue. I, I wouldn't be hanging around, boo. That, that, that's your cue. But I get it. This is when this this is the, this is the, this is how black women are programmed to expect nothing. You take all the heavy and expect nothing, and then when it gets heavy on your back, child, does to be ready to go. Now, last, let's check this out. Somebody, I've been hearing about this. Who is this on the screen? Who is this on the screen, ladies and gentlemen? I tell you who it is on the screen. Let's who who was this on the screen? Now this what this what struggle of gets you. Muhammad Ali Jr. Lee's wife after inheriting his family's riches, and they were living very very poor. I saw the place; it was very poor. Oh my goodness! What happened? Twenty. So now this article is dated January twenty third, twenty seventeen. All right, just so you know. 2016 was a year when we lost many legends in the world of music, film, and sports. Boxing legend Muhammad Ali was one of them. When Ali passed away on June 3rd, 2016, millions mourned his death, with his thousands of mourners paying their respects at the memorial service held for the late boxer in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. Now, seven months after the death of one of the most legendary figures in sports, his family is again in the news. For all the wrong reasons. When Muhammad Ali died last year, again, this is 20, he died in 2016. When Muhammad Ali died last year, he left his widow Lonnie $12 million and each of his nine children $6 million each. Ali's only biological son, Muhammad Ali Jr., who was reportedly living in Chicago, relying on food stamps and handouts, and was estranged from his father at the time of his death, was one of the children who received a $6 million inheritance. Shortly after receiving the inheritance, though, Ali Jr. reportedly skipped out on his wife, Shakira, and the two young daughters. Amira and Shakira. What did he do? Did he say, 
So we loaded up the truck and the moving Beverly Hills, that is. Uh uh. They said, Somebody move my child, ain't he? Abandoned his wife and two daughters. This is what they do. Six million dollars. And see, she should have got an attorney really fast. Because when you have an inheritance, if you let's say you, uh, uh, something called bring it into the marriage, then that's considered community property. Now, inheritance before is not. Well, from what I understand, well, what, let's say somebody, oh, okay, I got the check and I cast it, it's in our account. I would go ahead and conduct an attorney for ASAP, explain what's going on and who he is. Reportedly skipped out on his wife, Shakira, and their two daughters. What does that tell you? How do you think that's going to make those daughters feel? Dusties, all they're helping you do is give birth to low self-esteem queens and stick around. That video is coming up. So, yeah. Didn't, they, they didn't even say, didn't even say he gave him like a dime. You know, at least two, $1 million. It says, shortly after receiving the inheritance, he reportedly skipped out on his wife and his two young daughters. And they showed that apartment. It was very, very unpleasant. It really was. That was a place for a person in poverty. So I want to keep, I want to keep on fighting for. 2022, I keep telling you, it has to be about you. That's what he did. She gave him two daughters and look what happened. Left. Got six million dollars. Donation no more. Somebody said, oh, you're trying to turn black women against black men. No, black men do it themselves. I'm just showing you who they are in case you don't get the memo. She got evicted. What happened? Treating her like a bum. Six million dollars. What'd he do? Abandon his wife and daughters. So I will keep on hanging around. Hey, do you. I don't have a problem with it. Your life, not mine. Showing you every day. That's why when I look at some of these, like in a pandemic, life hard, and you see these young fools sitting up here pregnant. By who, girl? But hey, do you. Good morning to you, good morning to you, good morning to you. This is what a Dusty do, and they're doing it every day. Black women, you got to wake up before it's too late, and I'm out. See the poverty deal.